Hi, guys. Thanks for doing this today. Uh, I'll start with you, Jim. Uh, you talked about how important it was to bring Travis back. Just from your perspective, your thoughts on the relationships he's built with his players here, because we heard so many of them speak so highly of him yesterday. Yeah, well, Travis, it was important that, you know, we got him re-signed, we got him back in the fold. Um, you know, all these young players that we have on the team, you know, he's he they started out under Travis. He has close relationships with them. You know, they like him, they trust him. You know, when he they're when Travis is teaching them the right things to do and how to play, like the players all trust Travis. So I think, you know, that's the first step in this process where you know, I look at other successful teams where they, they've hired a young coach and kind of grew with their team. And, you know, that's where I see Travis, you know, with these young players we have in place. We're going to have to add more players to support these young players. But um, I, I see, you know, Travis continuing to grow with our group of uh, young players we have. And Travis, what did it mean to you to hear the way some of your players spoke so positively about your time with the organization yesterday? It uh, means a lot. Anytime uh, you, you hear feedback from players, um, you can't help but it, it matter and mean something to you. Uh, you know, I, I think it goes both ways. I, I, when I came here four years ago, uh, I talked about wanting to build something here, and I'm committed to that. And, and that was a big part of me staying uh, to the, committed to the organization, committed to the players, uh, and committed to winning. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that we got something done. I'm thankful, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. <clears throat> we'll take our next question from Farhan Lalji, TSN. Travis, throughout this process, were you ever concerned, even in, in recent weeks, that this might not get done and that you might have to, to look at other opportunities? Uh, maybe a little. I mean, it, it, you know, it got down to the wire, and uh, uh, obviously it was important to me to get done, important to the team to get done. And it was a different season as far as COVID and how it affects things financially. Uh, there was a process to it, but uh, ultimately, you know, I, I, I wanted to be here. And, um, but I'm, I'm just thankful that we did get it done. It's been reported that it's a, a two-year extension, um, which probably speaks to how much you did want to be here. Uh, and the fact that you had to wait this long, I know it's been reported that it's because of the financial concerns around the pandemic. So fast forward a year from now, theoretically, after next year, you would then be looking to further extend. I know Jim has talked about wanting to make changes, which are going to be challenging um, given the cap situation. So are there any concerns about this year determining future extensions and maybe whether or not you're going to be in that kind of position to succeed, if that makes sense? Um, I'm trying to wrap my head around what you're, what you're, well, what just, you asked. It, it might be a huge challenge to improve significantly, to improve the roster significantly this year. It might be a challenge. If it is after this year, you'd theoretically be negotiating the next extension. So are there concerns about that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, first of all, I, I wouldn't have signed back here if I didn't believe in what we're doing and what we're capable of doing and where we're going. Uh, I want to win, and th and that's why I signed back here. I didn't sign back here just to get two more years of coaching in the NHL. I, I know Jim. I know our ownership are committed to winning, and uh, hey, we own this season. It didn't go the way we wanted to. Uh, I can understand how people would be frustrated with the year. Uh, our group needs to evaluate. We need to make changes. Uh, but there's only one reason I signed back here is because I believe that we – we can win with this group and, and not just the players or coaches, but um, the ownership and, and management. Next up is Barry DeLay, Global TV. Uh, this one is for Jim. Uh, I, I guess the line all year has been we holding off talks with Travis because of the pandemic. Yet at the same time, you had new contracts uh, for Demko and Tanner Pearson. What, what was the, the difference between that? Uh, that you did sign players and Travis, obviously the money wouldn't come until the next year. Anyway, can you just explain that situation? Yeah, well, we, um, you know, we don't comment in the media on like contract negotiations. Uh, we made Travis an offer at the start of the year. Um, you know, during the course of the year, we would go back and forth and, 
you know, talk about it. Um, I guess as it, as it came down to the end of the year here, we, you know, we, we dived into a little bit harder and, um, you know, Travis, you know, he had a decision to make if he wanted to come back and, you know, we, we got it done here at the end. So I'm grateful for that. Um, given your, your cap crunch this year is, is the, a lot of success going to be dependent, maybe this is for Travis is dependent on inner improvement from your core and especially your supporting cast. Well, that'll be part of it. Um, I know Jim stated that the team is committed to doing whatever it has to do to, uh, take care of the financial part to make sure our team improves and, and, uh, that'll be part of it as well. Uh, you know, there's a collaboration all the time. How do you get better? Uh, obviously, drafting is part of it with bringing in young players, um, developing the players while they're here. We've got, a, uh, I believe we have a lot of good young players with our team right now that are still improving. Uh, you know, they're young. They're, there's a maturing process through that. You look at the teams that play in the playoffs, uh, even in the North Division, the top players that have been in the league a little bit longer than our group. Our, our young guys need to continue to improve and that's going to be a vital part of it and then there's the financial part of of improving through free agency or trades and uh all three of them will continue to be part of how our team improves we'll go next here to ian mcintyre sportsnet good morning gentlemen um the first question is for jim uh, a lot of the players this weekend and travis as well has talked about how difficult the schedule was at the start this year. Antoine Roussel yesterday said it was ridiculous. You had uh, 13 games in the first 21 days and nobody played as many games as you in this division. And also uh, all the other teams had some sort of schedule break early on, which was important under the circumstances. Can you tell me why the club accepted the schedule that you did at the start of this season? Yeah, we, we don't have, you know, like we don't have, what they do is they, they send us a schedule and what your schedule looks like, but we don't have the ability to see anybody else's schedule. So, you know, as far as we know, when we see the schedule, you know, everybody's kind of on that same schedule. So, you know, it was like 19, I'm not going to make excuses though. Now we're, you know, it is what it is. We, we had 19 games in 34 nights. It was a tough start. We had a, a tough start, a tough finish at the end, but, um, that season's over. We're looking forward. We want to be aggressive this summer and we want to get back to being a playoff team again next year. So, you know, I'm not going to look back. It was, it was a hard season. It was a long, hard season, something like I've never seen before as far as scheduling and, and all the different things that went into it, uh, getting sick. Um, and then even like coming out uh, of, of being sick, like, you know, JT came out and, um, you know, I thought was real honest and, and, and stood up for the players. You know, what happened there is is the NHL, you know, they're dealing with regular COVID. After 10 days, you know, with regular COVID, the players don't have symptoms and then they, they make the schedule. Uh, what happened in this instance, we were dealing with a different, uh, the P1 variant. After 10 days, um, our players were still having symptoms. And, you know, through the, the league, JT came out with a statement. And then, you know, we actually had a meeting the next day, next morning with the league, the doctor from the league, the doctor from the PA, and our Dr. Bovard and John Sanderson to explain to them that, hey, our players, you know, this is different than the regular COVID. They're still really sick. They, they skated a couple of practices and they were, you know, physically sick, even – a week or two after we were playing after games, they'd have severe migraine headaches. We were dealing with something totally different than what, you know, other teams seen. The, the NHL recognized that they, they changed our schedule around. So, you know, we could get back up, ease back into, you know, playing that last stretch of games. So, you know, I'd like to thank the league and, and the PA to everybody getting involved to make that happen. And you mentioned in your um, opening statement, you included uh, buyouts uh, as an option uh, to try to improve the team for next year. Does that mean you have the authority to to spend the money to to make a buyout? Because it would it would be different than it seems what it was after last season. Yeah, ownership has given us the resources to do whatever we need to do 
to, to get back to where we want to be next season, and that's a playoff team. So, you know, buyouts are going to be part of our strategy this summer to save cap space. Um, like I said earlier, we're going to be aggressive in, in, in the trade front um, and, you know, in free agency. Um, we want to add speed and depth to our forward group. Um, I thought maybe this year some of the – the players that we thought were going to take the next step in their development, um, you know, some 23, 24 year old guys that we thought would, you know, be able to kind of, you know, keep moving forward and taking more responsibility on that didn't happen. And that's on me. Um, going forward, we're going to make sure that, you know, we have these good young core pieces in place that we surround them with, you know, some veteran guys or some guys in that age group that can help them uh, keep getting better. We need more scoring depth. Uh, so we're going to work on all those things in the offseason. Next up, we'll go to Gemma Carson Smith, the Canadian Press. Hi, guys. Jim, there's been a vocal segment of this uh, fan base who isn't happy with the job that you've done this season, despite all of the challenges. What do you have to say to them to assure them that things will be different going forward? Well, it, it's been a challenging year. Like, you know, I guess when we look right back at, um, you know, before the pandemic, before we even paused in the first place, you know, we were at a general manager's meeting and, you know, the cap, you know, they, they were forecasting for this year was going to be between 85 and $88 million. So, um, you know, we had the space to do what we needed to do, you know, last summer. Um, a week later, we got shut down with the pandemic and, you know, and then came back, played in the bubble. Um, but, you know, coming out of the bubble, I thought the bubble was a great experience for our young players to play in playoff hockey, to do all that. Coming out of the bubble with a, you know, a flat cap then happening this year, we had some tough decisions to make. We have you know, going forward, we knew we had Demko and Petey and Quinn that needed to be resigned, and we got Batch done. We're going to work hard here this next little bit to get, you know, Quinn and Petey signed, um, and and then go from there. We need to to build around these guys. These are core pieces that are important pieces that you need to win, and but they need the continued support, you know, throughout the lineup to to get to where we want to get to. And Travis, obviously, uh, you folks have all been through so much this season, perhaps you more than most. Can you talk about what uh, what the emotions have been like and what it's been like mentally and how it feels to finally have this this one piece of business off your plate today? Well, I know a lot of the players talked yesterday about this season and how hard it was. And, and uh, yeah, there's no hiding it. It was, it was a different season. It was a hard season at times. Uh, but again, you know, sometimes hard things, you go through them and you look back and, and you grow from hard times as well. And, uh, you know, I think when you're going through it, sometimes it, it felt like a lot for our players. Um, but a lot of teams had to go through it as well. Again, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses. There's a lot of people in the world right now with COVID that are going through difficult times. And, and we're still fortunate to be working and playing and coaching in the NHL. So at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's still a, things are okay. Uh, but in our world, in the hockey world, yeah, it was a little bit difficult at times, but that's okay. Uh, I think Jim said it earlier, we're not going to sit here and dwell on the past. We're looking forward and how we're going to make our team better, but you learn a lot when you win, when you have success, when you when things are going well in your life, but you also learn a lot when you're going through tough times as well. We'll go next to Thomas Drance, The Athletic. <clears throat> Jim, a lot of the club's messaging today, including your direct comments on several occasions in this presser, have focused on returning your club to the playoffs. Uh, is, is that enough, a high enough bar for this club's ambition? And are you able to explain why the focus of comments from ownership on down today uh, are not on building a team capable of contending credibly for the Cup? Yeah, well, Thomas, I think the first step to compete for the Cup is you need to make the playoffs, right? Um, and, you know, you've seen when we went in the bubble last year, we were in the playoffs, we won a couple rounds. But, you know, that's, that's the first, because you need to, you know, make the moves to, to make your team competitive, to be a playoff team. 
we still, our core players are still young guys. And, you know, you know, the playoff experience they, they got last year was, was great for them. But, you know, we need to, to figure out a way to get in first. And then once you get into the playoffs, if you have good goaltending, you play with the right structure, you know, we should have a good power play. We have the players to, to have a good power play. And, and then, you know, anything can happen in the playoffs, as we've seen last year. So, you know, that's, that's the first step for us. Ultimately, that's what we're trying to accomplish here is to win a Stanley Cup with this group of players that, you know, we're drafting, developing. But, you know, first thing is, is you need to make the playoffs and then keep going from there. And this is sort of for both of you, and I know needs to be asked delicately because I'm sure a lot of this is still in progress. But for Jim in particular, are you able to discuss, um, you know, any other planned changes to your hockey operations group? Uh, additionally, are you able to discuss your plan for fleshing out the rest of the coaching staff around Travis? And will efforts be made to return the same group uh, that your club had this season? Yeah, so, you know, the first step in this process was getting Travis signed. So we got that done. You know, the next now three or four days, I'm going to, we're going to talk to Travis, um, go over the coaching staff, you know, review everybody, um, and then, you know, make them offers. Uh, as far as the hockey ops staff, same thing. You know, at the end of the year, it's about review and we're exploring everything. We want to get better in every aspect of what we do. And, but, you know, we just finished the season and as we move forward here, we'll, we'll get that all figured out. We'll go next to Jason Bruff, fourth net 650. Hey Jim, it's been uh, uh, seven years on the job now. Um, five missed playoffs, some, some challenging times. Uh, I imagine this season has been the most challenging. I don't know if you've had much time to ponder but uh, what are some of the big lessons that you've learned on the job uh, during your time in Vancouver? Well, you know, it's, you know, like this year wasn't easy. Um, you know, the, the pandemic, um, you know, given, you know, like some of the things that were brought up, the schedule we had, our group getting sick. Out of the seven years, this probably was the toughest year, you know, to be a general manager with all the, the different issues that you were dealing with, you know, even outside of the hockey. So um, there was a lot of, you know, stress and anxiety that comes with that. But I think, you know, we got through it as a group. Um, you know, the adversity of having a hard season like this, I believe, will make us better going forward. But, you know, we're going to have to add pieces, you know, and, and have more depth and, and have better players. And, and we're looking to do that. Um, you know, we're trying to build a team that, that can compete and win a Stanley Cup. And, you know, if you look at, you know, some of these other teams, you know, it, it takes – it's sometimes it's a long process. And we're going to add another real good player in this year's draft to our group. And we do I, – I really believe we do have a lot of pieces in place that when we finally win the Cup that, you know, that are in place right now. So, you know, we're going to continue to do the work. Ultimately, that's what – we're in the business for to win the cup. We got to just keep, you know, plowing ahead, doing the right things, you know, internally, working with our players, developing our players, and um, and we need to make the playoffs next year. That's the goal right now, you know, as we go into the off season, and from from ownership to the general manager to the coach, and that's what's going to be, you know, the the goal for our players as we start in fall. We talk a lot about um, players and where they need to improve. We might say someone's got to get stronger. He's got to learn the defensive zone, uh, all that old stuff. Um, where, as as a hockey department, do you see any specific areas where where you would like to get better? Whether it's cap allocation, uh, communication, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of elements to your job. Any areas where you think, wow, we could probably do a better job here. Um, I think, you know, us moving our farm team to Abbotsford, I think is a fantastic move, um, you know, to be able to stay on top of the development of our players down there, um, you know, to have the interaction between, 
you know, our strength and conditioning coaches in Vancouver with the Abbotsford people, you know, and all the different phases of that. Being able to show up at the games next year and, and watch the players play and develop, um, you know, I, I just think that it was an excellent decision uh, by Francesco, and I think it's going to pay dividends for our organization moving forward. We'll go next to Patrick Johnston, Vancouver Province. Uh, Jim, have any players asked to be traded? No. And uh, at what point did you learn about the allegations against Jake Rattanen, and when do you expect the independent investigator to make their report? Yeah, so l let me just talk about that and go through kind of the process. I know, you know, there was, you know, like there's some talk about why we weren't, um, you know, more communicative with the media when we were going through all that. Um, so what happened, um, you know, the girl uh, put her blog out there, uh, a reporter, you know, was going to write a story. They, you know, communicated that to us. Uh, Chris Gear, our chief legal um, counsel, he got involved with it. Um, when we, when we, we took the allegations seriously. So, you know, the first step in the process is we, we put out a statement. Uh, I talked to Jake and, and told him that, you know, he's going to have to take a leave from the team. Um, and then, you know, over the course of the next couple days, uh, the girl filed a police report. So then it became police business. So I'm not going to comment. I don't have any idea. Um, the police are doing the investigation now. It's in their hands. Um, when they, you know, let Chris know what's going on, that's when we'll have news. So I have no idea when we're going to get that news. We'll go next to Rob Williams, Daily Hive. Uh, yeah, a question for Jim. Uh, what is your top priority in free agency or the trade route this summer? Uh, regarding the types of players you're looking to add. So, you know, you know in other words, what do you think you're missing uh, that you'll be able to add in the, in the short term here? Well, I like, you know, I think we, we need more speed up front. We need, you know, a deeper, you know, I'd like to, to see, you know, I thought Niels Hoglander for a first year player came in, had an excellent season. He's only going to get better. Um, when Vasily Petkolzin's done, you know, with the world championships, we're going to get him signed. I think he's going to be, you know, a lot like but Coles and he can come in and help us next year, but we still need to add some players with speed, you know, some veteran leadership, speed and depth scoring to the, to our forward group. Um, I think that's going to be an important um, for our team to, to get to where we need, need to be is, is it's going to be about speed and more scoring depth. And you can ask Travis his thoughts on that, but from, you know, that's kind of what we, we talk about is that, you know, we want to be a three line scoring team and, and we need to, to add more players to get there. Is Alex Edler a player you'd like to resign this summer? And, um, you know, at age 35, um, he was a top four defenseman for you this year. Do you think he can be a top four defenseman for you next year if you're willing to sign him? Yeah. So, you know, Alex has is, is been a special player, you know, throughout his career with the Vancouver Canucks. Um, and we haven't had any exit meetings with the players yet. The season just finished. We're going to sit down next week, do Zoom calls with all the players, um, get their thoughts, um, and it, including Alex. So, Tell, you know, I talked to him. Uh, I, I see he came out in the media the other day and said he wants to play, but I'll have a conversation, you know, with him this next week and, you know, we'll just talk about what's next. Next is Ben Kuzma, Vancouver Province. Oh, good morning, gents. I have one for each of you. I'll start with uh, Travis. Uh, Travis, your captain spoke uh, very passionately uh, yesterday about the process of getting back to the playoffs and that you can't really win. Uh, with a two-line team, uh, he sort of made a plea for adding guys uh, in your bottom six. Um, it was an interesting season in the sense that you had some waiver wire claims, you had a trade, you had guys who might work into that mix next year. What do you need uh, in that bottom six mix next year, Travis? Well, I mean, it was when you look at our team, where where we were last year in the bubble to where we were at the end of the year, it, it, 
there's probably seven or eight guys that were hurting out of the lineup for starters. So, um, you know, when you have a year like we had this year compared to the year like that we had the year before, it's it makes it easy to say you've got to get better in a lot of areas. And um, to just sit here and just say, hey, we just need to make our bottom six better. Well, yeah, I mean, we got to make our team better. We're going to have to evaluate our team, uh, which we will do after we get to decompress a little bit after the season and do a thorough evaluation of our group. Uh, and that's sitting and talking with Jim. It's talking with the coaches. It's going over areas that we need to improve in. And then it's committing to making the changes that we need. And, uh, you know, I like that Bo said we need to get, like, that he talked like he did yesterday. Uh, I've said it all year. We want guys that just want to win and are willing to do whatever it takes to win. And it's not just the players. It's everyone in the organization. And that's the commitment you need going forward. And, and how you get better uh, is with that commitment and that desire. And one for you, uh, Jim, your support of Travis dates back to last fall when you publicly stated your support of him. In a normal circumstance, a general manager has the big hammer to determining who's going to run his bench. But you also have a very uh, involved ownership group and, and one in particular person in Francesco. How did that process play out, uh, Jim, in terms of understanding that you needed to retain Travis and, and you better get it done? Well, Francesco, first of all, is very supportive of everything that we do. Um, you know, he's not unlike any other owner in the, in the league where, you know, we have to, you know, present our case and explain to him our decisions. And this is why we want to do it. Um, you know, he's, he's always really liked Travis, um, you know. So as we were talking about, you know, what's the best fit for our group next year going forward to get off to a good start, to get to where we need to be. You know, I think, you know, it was, it was a, it was a decision that, you know, he left to me, but you know, and with his support, we, we thought Travis is the best guy for that job. He has, you know, great communication skills with our younger players. Um, our younger players still need to grow and get better. Um, you know, and, and, you know, it, it's not just our bottom six guys, it's our top six guys too. On any given night this year, you know, we're playing the Edmontons, the Dracidals, the McDavid's, the Winnipeg's with the Shifley's and the Connors, like the, the, the Toronto's like these guys, their top six guys are some of the best players in the league. So, you know, our bottom six guys, we're going to make changes there and we're going to improve on that group. But I believe our top six guys need to get better next year, too, if we're going to get to where we need to be. Next up, we'll go to Jeff Patterson with The Athletic. Uh, first question is for you, Jim. Uh, how aggressive will you be to capitalize on other teams with protection issues ahead of Seattle expansion? Well, we're looking at everything. Our, our pro scouts have already you know, done their – their sheets for the mock draft and what that looks like. And, you know, we'll continue to go over those sheets every day, have zoom calls with them. Um, and like I said, we're going to do our due diligence of talking to, to every team in the league. And, and if there's things that we can do to teams, maybe that have, um, you know, issues with expansion, uh, you know, we'll be talking to them and trying to figure it out. We, we have lots of work to do. I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be an easy summer. We have a lot of work to do, and we've already started in and all that work. And Travis, congrats on the deal. Uh, you've had the good fortune of working with a lot of really talented young players that the club has drafted here, and Vasily Pud is going to be next. Uh, how much do you know of him and – can you just maybe explain a little bit to the fan base of like, how do you go about sort of figuring out where a guy is best slotted? Obviously it worked out well for Hoaglander this year. You took a bit of a chance and put him in the top six and he didn't look back, but uh, how do you go about sort of determining sight unseen, you know, where you're thinking about slotting a guy heading into a training camp? Well, I think when it's sight unseen, uh, much like Hoaglander, uh, he's a good example. Um, you have to trust the people that you work with. Uh, I think that's something that is, is, is vital in any, um, whether it's sports or business, uh, you have to trust the people you work with on their, on their judgment, their opinions. And, um, you know, and then you have to watch them 
and watch them close and, and try to get to know these players as well as you can, what they're, how strong they are physically, how, how strong they are mentally. Uh, Cause there are challenges that go along with it. There's, and I think part of it is treating players. You can't treat each guy the same cause they're different. And uh, you know, when he gets here, uh, we're definitely excited about him coming um, from what I've heard. I can't wait to see him on the ice with our group and uh, we'll put him in a position to succeed and then make evaluations as we go forward. Next up, we'll go to Chris Faber, Canucks Army. Hey guys, uh, my question is for Jim. Uh, Jim, earlier in the year, you talked about this team potentially being two years away from competing. And today you're talking about the team getting back in the playoffs next year. I'm wondering, is it two different things to look at a team competing for a Stanley Cup? Or are you guys just looking to compete for the playoffs as soon as next year? And like you said, see what happens. I, I think that's the first step. Like the first step is, you know, making the playoffs. And then once you make the playoffs, then anything can happen. Like I think your, your young players, they get experience. Every year they learn more and more. And as they, you know, continue to physically and mentally mature as players, then, you know, they get better. They understand, you know, what the playoffs are all about, how hard it is, what it means. And, you know, you look at teams that have won the cup, like, you know, it's taken, it's taken time. It's taken time where they've, you know, developed that confidence in, in winning around some or winning around or two. Sometimes, you know, they have hard losses along the way and it makes them stronger and more resilient the next year when they're in the playoffs. So, you know, I, I believe it's a process, but I believe first and foremost, it starts with making the playoffs. And then, you know, as your team continues to grow and get better and more confident, then, you know, then that leads to competing for the cup. And we've seen you trade draft picks to get into positions like the JT Miller trade to get your team closer to the playoffs. Is that something that this group will be exploring this off season? Or are you still looking to hold on to draft picks for the long run? Well, we're going to explore all of our options. I'm not going to sit here today and, and, you know, start figuring out what that looks like, but you know, if something comes up and it makes sense for us to try to figure out we're that's what we're going to do. Like we're not going to, close ourselves off on anything we you know there's lots of work to be done we're going to do the work and and if you know things make sense we'll look at doing you know stuff like that next up is daniel wagner with vancouver is awesome uh jim earlier in the season uh you you said that you ran out of time with Tyler, re-signing Tyler to Foley. Uh, did you learn anything from that experience that you can put into practice this offseason to make sure that type of situation doesn't happen again? Well, it's like I said earlier, it wasn't so much running out of time. Um, you know, what had happened is the landscape shifted. You know, the, we were going from, you know, possibly an 85 to $88 million cap to an 81 five cap we had to make hard decisions um, knowing that you know we have Thatcher Demko that we needed to resign Quinn Hughes and, and Petey so you know we we made tough decisions at the time like you know it, it is what it is now but you know going forward um, we're going to get these guys signed they're going to be the core group of you know our our what I think is going to be a Stanley Cup winning team and, you know, we're going to get these guys signed. We're going to move forward. We're going to add the pieces we need to add. We're going to be aggressive. And, we, we, you know, we, we're not happy with the way this year, you know, happened. We, you know, I thought, you know, we could be more competitive, but it didn't happen. So, you know, we, you know we're going to move forward and we're going to do the things that we need to do to be committed uh, to win. Um, you've talked about uh, needing better forward depth than the bottom six, uh, but one of the issues that seems to have been uh, an issue for several years now is the blue line. And just heading into next year, you'll have Myers, Schmidt, and Hughes once he resigns. But those will be your only experienced NHL defensemen under contract. Uh, what is your plan to round out and improve the blue line? Well, we're going to... Um... You know, we got some some UFA guys that, you know, we want to talk to. Um, I thought Travis Hamannick was a was a good fit in our group. We'd like to try to bring him back if we can. We're going to sit down and talk to Alex Adler. 
um, here next week. I thought Jack Rathbone, I thought when he played, um, he never looked out of place. He was, you know, he's a, he's a good skater. He moves the puck with conviction. Um, you know, I thought the games he played, he looked good. So, but we're going to have to, you know, it's not unlike the forward group. We're going to have to add some D men here to, to, you know, to be more competitive next year. We'll return now to Ian McIntyre with Sportsnet. Tim, uh, you, you talked about um, beginning the process the next few days of making offers to your to your assistant coaches. Uh, of course, they're they're now in a position where they can just wait for an offer from somebody else as well. How concerned are you about losing Ian Clark, considering the importance of the position and what you've invested in Thatcher Demko? Well, Ian's an important part of our our coaching staff. Um, and I'm, you know, the first step, like I said, was getting Travis done. And now that we got his, you know, his contract finished, we're going to have conversations. Obviously, we want to bring Ian back. He's a big part of, you know, the, the success of our goalies. Um, you know, after I get through with this today, I'm going to talk to Ian later this afternoon and, you know, continue to figure out if there's something that can be done to bring him back. We want him back. And, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, he decides he, he's going to come back. But, you know, and then the other assistant coaches, we're going to, you know, continue to, to talk about, to work through with Travis. And then, you know, in the next course of the next three or four days a week, we'll figure out that group and get them signed. We'll go next to Farhan Lalji, TSN. Jim, you've talked about uh, wanting to, to be aggressive in free agency and, and among the priorities, you've talked about veteran leadership. Um, you've done that before, been aggressive at free agency and prioritized that type of player. And it has at times led to some inefficient contracts in the bottom six. Um, with that in mind, will you change that process a bit or maybe evaluate differently the types of players you're, you're looking for if you have the money to spend or able to clear that space or – yeah, I just want to ask you, you know, comparing it to what you've done to this point, where you're at, if it changes the approach this time. Yeah, like we want to we want to add like, you know, guys that can support, you know, supplement our top nine, nine, nine forwards. We want to try to have three scoring lines. So, you know, we're, we're looking at a different type of player here. We're looking at, you know, players that drive offense that, you know, we can play, you know, with our other you know, offensive players that, you know, because we need to score more. If we're going to, we need to spend more time in the other team's end. We need to, you know, we can't be on our heels. We can't, we got to be better, um, you know, in, in the middle of the ice. We can't have so many high danger scoring chances against. But I think if we, we have better offensive players, I think it starts by spending more time in the other team's end that, you know, that, that's a start to, to where we want to get to. And for either one of you, uh, as the season progressed, there were a number of players that weren't here at the start of the year that, that wound up getting added, uh, be it, you know, need-based because of injuries or what have you. I mean, the, the Travis Boyds, the Jimmy VCs, the, the players that got called up from the minors, there were a number of guys that were added, Highmore, so on. Did any of those types of players surprise you to the point where you think they can provide a lot of value next year? I thought they all played well. Um, you know, it's it, whenever you come to a new team, a new system, uh, it's new opportunity. I'm not going to go through every player and, and talk about each guy that came through. I think there's once we go through and talk about each player individually uh, as a staff and review our group, uh, you know, there will be a couple guys that have surprised us and probably played better than we thought. And uh, those are part of the decisions, whether what players come back next year. Uh, that's all part of that uh, evaluation at the end of the year. Okay, we have time for two more questions here. We'll go first to Patrick Johnston. Um, Jim, what is the, the sort of status of things with the Sedins? What roles might they fill? And, and if they do come on board, how does that affect John Weisbrod? Well, it has no effect on John Weisbrod. He's, you know, he's my assistant. Um, he's really good at what he does. Um, I lean on him a lot, so it has no effect. 
the 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 Sedins when they were players, um, we all know, you know, how, they were great players. They're great people. They work hard. They work extremely hard. Uh, as they were retiring, when I had them up in my office, I said to them, like, listen, you know, like, I don't know what the next step is for you guys, but at some point, if you want to come back and you want to be part of, you know, what we're doing around here and contribute, then, you know, the, the, their idea was, is they were going to take a year, a couple of years off and spend it with their families. I think, you know, their kids are getting older now. And so, you know, we continue to have conversations with them. Um, and, you know, that'll be, you know, up to them as to, you know, when if or when or if they want to do that. And if they do, we all know, you know, you know, what great additions they would be to the organization, you know, from the type of people they are and how hard they work. So, um, you know, I'll just leave it at that for now. But, you know, that's kind of where we're at. And Travis, having the team in, in Abbotsford, you know, Will that affect, you know, sort of how you manage your job at all? Is there sort of more integration, I suppose, with the coaching staff there? Um, you know, will you try to get out and see how the players are out there doing? Or are you already busy enough? Oh, I think it'll, uh, it'll be good. Uh, I think it'll, you know, once we get back to a regular schedule um, during the season, there's always a, a regular season. You have a lot more time. Looking back last year, I don't know if we ever had a day where we had more than one practice. I think that happened once between games. So, but during a regular season, a lot of times you have two, three, you know, sometimes you might have four days between games. Uh, it'll get, give us a chance to go out and a sit with the coaches sometimes um, B watch the players, watch, even watch a practice. Uh, I've talked to other people around the league when they have their minor league team in, uh, in the same city. And there are a lot of advantages to it. We'll take our last question today from Gemma Carson-Smith, Canadian Press. I've got a couple of clarifications, probably both for Jim. First of all, can you clarify, uh, we've heard reports that the deal with Travis is for two years. Is that a correct report? Yes. Two years. Okay. And on the Vertan situation, I understand that there's probably not much you can say, but I'm wondering if you can clarify whether there's an independent investigation going on uh, parallel to the police matter, or uh, if if the independent investigation has been pushed off for now? No, it's still going on. The answer is yes to that. 